Hi, Laura Silva Quesada here. I'm so happy that you decided to experience a Silva Mind Body Healing Home Study course. And it really means a lot to me that you make the most of this program, that it really does for you what you're hoping that it does for you. So before you begin, there's several things I want you to keep in mind. One, get yourself a journal or a notebook for you to jot your thoughts, your ideas, and your discoveries about yourself. You can even use your laptop if you wish. This is going to help you along the way to document your growth and your realizations. In addition, as soon as I finish talking to you, sit down and write your goals for health. Now, these goals can be short-term, medium-term, and long-term. You want to set goals that you can achieve and manifest in a very short period of time, between one and two weeks, maybe within the month. But you also want to make sure that you have goals set out for six months, 12 months, 24 months, five years, seven years, 10 years, 20 years. Create a goal that is going to describe how you are going to conclude this life. Take the time to describe a life that is strong, full of vitality, with great energy. A life of a person who is in their upper years of age, still productive, resourceful, quick thinking, sharp, and smart. Two, this course is a 10 CD course. It's going to be best if you follow that order. And the reason I say that is because we are going to approach the healing process in this manner. We are first going to discuss the cause of 90% of all health challenges, and that is stress. But more than that, it's really important that you focus on the core emotions that lead to stress. We'll talk more about that later. Then we're going to move on to working with the belief structures that govern your living experience, and not only your living experience, but your health as well. From there, we move on to the healing of the emotional body, the spiritual body, the mental body, and the physical body. You'll also learn to work with different aspects that will bring in new elements to your meditations. Not only that, but you'll also learn what needs your bodies require in order to maintain health and well-being. The physical body needs to meet certain requirements, as does the spiritual body, the mental body, and the emotional body. When you hear these requirements, you may think, I already know that, and you probably do. But are you doing it? Knowing is not enough. It's actually the doing that is where you're going to find the real healing in this process. They may seem really simple and obvious, but unless you're actually doing it, you're missing the whole point. You must go through each one of these different requirements of each one of those bodies and discover whether you're meeting those requirements fully and completely. Because if you're not, then you are missing some of the very fundamental processes that will lead to health. I sometimes hear people say, well, gosh, that's just a lot of talk. We're not getting to the real meat of things. But you see, that is the real meat of things. That is the real core of what you must do in order to have true health and well-being. And it's not that difficult. That's the whole point. Healing does not have to be challenging. You just need to do what it takes. And unless you do, the healing will not happen. A lot of times people are looking for the quick fix, the shortcut. Tell me what I have to do right now because I want to be healthy tomorrow. The fastest way to get to the outcome of health is to make sure that each one of the requirements of each one of your bodies are met. Three, when you're working with stress, Pay special attention to what causes fear and anger in your life and pay close attention to those core emotions we'll be discussing because those core emotions and fear and anger are going to help you get to the root of what may be the real cause of your health problem. 
Four, when we get to beliefs, make sure that you take the time to write down the beliefs that are holding you back from enjoying your life freely and completely. Jot everything down because this way you can keep track of what you really want to achieve. Of greatest emphasis, if there's nothing else that you take away from this program, I hope that you do understand the importance of managing stress, discovering what makes you angry and or afraid, and the beliefs that govern your living experience. If those two things you focus consciously on, and you really put a lot of your energy onto working through these elements or these factors, you will be on your way to health and healing. Your beliefs are a huge part of the healing process. Take the time to write down the limiting beliefs that you have in the areas of health, love, abundance, or money, career, and happiness. Because between managing your stress effectively and going beyond your limiting beliefs lies the real secret towards health and healing. Five, when we get into the meditations, make sure that always the last image you create is one of you in perfect health, of you whole and complete. Six, Every time you imagine yourself whole and complete, you are going to do it in a holographic manner. That means that you are going to utilize all of your sensing mechanisms, your mind's ability to see, hear, taste, touch, and smell, and you're going to do it as if you are in the experience, as if you are already healthy in a past tense sense. In other words, it is a done deal. Seven, when we talk about the explosion of emotion, this is going to be an experience of projecting gratitude, appreciation, and love from your heart organ. So think back to a time that you have experienced deep and profound love. Think back of a time when you really felt gratitude and appreciation, and make a strong point of reference of what that feels like, because you are going to utilize that memory in every single exercise. You're going to project this explosion of emotion, of gratitude, appreciation, and love for being healthy, whole, and complete, even if you're not there already. You are still going to do that so that your body, your brain, and your mind can begin to accept that you are whole and complete, that you are healthy, so that your body, brain, and mind can begin to learn how to produce health in your system, in your body, in your being. Eight, whether or not you agree with everything I say, please do me a favor. Open your mind to the possibility of health and healing. Open your mind to the possibility of doing something that may be a little bit different. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Health is there for you. I have seen so many thousands of people regain their health with these methods, and I know that you can too. Nine, apply the suggestions that are going to help every single one of your bodies heal. The emotional, spiritual, mental, and the physical. Do what it takes. Because if you don't, you cannot honestly say that you have given it your best to regain health and be whole and complete. And 10, let's make an agreement right now that you and I will live a life of health. And when we move on from this planet, it is going to be because our mission is fulfilled. We have served our purpose 
we have fulfilled the reason why we came into this planet, and it is our choice to leave it. And let's agree to leave this planet in fine and perfect health simply by taking a deep breath and entering deep and healthy, restful sleep. I challenge you to that. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Laura Silva Quesada, and I'd like to welcome you to the Silva Mind Body Healing Course. Before we begin, I really want us to come together and start thinking about what are some of the outcomes that we want to achieve. In order for us to be better prepared for the information that's going to be presented in this course, I'd like for you to consider a few things. Bring to mind what are the very goals you hope to achieve by listening to this course? Because something made you buy it. What are the very things that you wish to accomplish by the end of this program? By the time you finish the last CD of this course, what do you want to look like? What do you want to feel inside and out? How is your thought process going to be different and better? How are you going to know that you are moving towards health? Because it is about healing, mind-body healing, your mind over your body healing. It's about whole body healing, holistic healing, the kind of healing that occurs when you take responsibility for your body. Let's face it, the way our world is evolving today, can you really rely on somebody else or some other system outside of you being in charge of your health and healing in the near future? Your body as a whole has the capacity to heal itself. And to achieve true health and healing, you must actively participate in the healing process. There's a lot of techniques out there that can help in healing the mind, body, and emotions. Some techniques may seem like a quick fix, and that may be true to a certain extent, in that they do help alleviate the symptoms, emotional or otherwise, but may not get to the fundamental roots. For true healing, there is no real shortcut. The shortest route to true healing is to confront the true causes of illness, and that is very dimensional, and the reason why we must work with the healing of all of our parts, the emotional, the spiritual, the mental, and then it can all be made manifest in the physical. It's important for you to have a clear understanding in your mind, in your being, as to what all you do want to achieve. Now, I know that some of us have different health needs, and some of us know a lot more information about health and healing, others maybe not as much. Here, you're going to learn information that can truly change your life for the better and can truly lead to a healthier you a holistically healthier you, where you feel, believe, think, behave, and you live and talk with health just pouring out of you. The tools, the information, the concepts, the techniques, the discussions will be presented in a way that I hope will definitely make a difference in your life for the better. Think of what you want to achieve as an outcome as to where health is concerned. Because you must have a clearly defined outcome in your mind. We're talking about health not only as far as health of the body. The body is the expression of everything else that's going on inside of you. Everything else is going on inside your mind, inside your spirit. All of that that is invisible and intangible within you expresses itself in your body. And simply because it's so obvious as to where you are, stand internally by what you express or represent externally. This is going to be a journey of self-discovery for many of you. And you may want to listen to this home study course with someone who is supportive of your healing process or is in the process of healing themselves. This way, you can discuss your thoughts, feelings, emotions, and express with one another 
and develop a support system for each other. There's something magical about exposing your heart and soul, your fear and your pain to someone who really, really cares. Suddenly, things fall into proper perspective and you can move forward faster and easier and the healing truly begins. So it's a good idea to get a journal and write down your discoveries about yourself along the way and title your journal with something that is meaningful to you. There's a heartfelt reason why I've taken a lot of time and a lot of interest in studying holistic health. Although today I am so healthy and I love my life. I love my husband, my children, family members, the people I work with. I have a wonderful, wonderful life and it's healthy. There was a time that it wasn't all that way. It was a time when my body was broken, my spirit was broken, my heart was broken, my way of thinking was not resourceful or productive. I felt a disconnect with God. You know, I, it was just a time that was a very gloomy time in my life. Those things that happen in our past tend to result in certain outcomes, certain belief structures that govern our living experience. And it was really a great concern to me at one point in my life many, many years ago that if I didn't do something now to change it, I was not going to have a life, much less a healthy life. I was to have no life because the direction that I had taken at that time was getting worse and worse and worse. The energy was evolving in a very negative way, and it had to stop. So I very clearly remember the moment when I made a decision that I was going to turn my life around. I was going to turn my health around. And it wasn't just about the body. It was about my spirit. It was about my mind. It was about my emotions. It was about my belief structures that were governing my living experience. And when I stopped to think and work with that, I literally felt like, where do I begin? Where do I begin? I'm such a broken mess. And I thought, well, just take the first step because until you do, you won't know what the next step is going to be. And I want to say how happy I am for you that you have taken this step because this is the first step that is going to open the door towards your healing process. And we're going to do this together. I want you to to listen to my voice. I want you to know how passionate I am about wanting to give you this information because I know that it saved my life. I know that if it wasn't for this, I wouldn't be here today being able to share this information with you. I know that if I can just reach your heart, reach your soul, reach you deep inside, This information, when you apply it, will make your life, your health better. This is the only body you have. This body is going to carry you through the rest of your life. Now, how do you want to be at this very moment? You can decide. You can decide to have a life of health, of strength, vitality, of joy, a life of love, a life where you're true to yourself and you carry yourself with vigor, or you can choose to do nothing depending on somebody else to take care of your health and continue to evolve your life with old beliefs that are going to say, oh, people, when they get older, they begin to hurt. They begin to get diseased. They get tired, can't stand up straight. Their bones get weak. What do you choose? Because you can truly turn it around. You can truly choose to live with a quality of life that is going to be healthy in every respect of the word healthy. Get yourself in a mental state that is going to allow this information to go deep within you, that you will be able to utilize it, that you'll consider applying the tools, techniques, and the concepts, and that you will be able to make changes for the better. By this time, you realize that we're not just going to focus on just the health of the body because that's not enough. It's not enough to just say, okay, I want to fix my body up because the body will not get healthier if the rest of you is not healthy as well. 
The whole body is referred to as having three components, the spirit, the mind, and the physical body itself. But what is not usually addressed is probably the most important component of health, and that is your emotions. Most people don't like to deal with their emotions because it's either too revealing or can be very challenging or difficult, even painful. And some of you at this point in time would probably think, okay, this is where I step out because I don't want to go there. Well, guess what? If you don't go there, you're not going to get healthy. I want to be really upfront with you right now. We're going to be working with the emotional you early on in the program, along with belief structures. We're going to be working with those beliefs that govern your living experience that don't work for you, and we're going to change them. So for our practical use and purposes, we'll be talking about health from a whole body or holistic point of view. And that means that we're going to be addressing health from a physical, a mental, a spiritual, and an emotional point of view. I find it easier if I can talk about those different components as bodies, the physical body, the emotional body, the mental body, and the spiritual body. And each of those parts or each of those bodies have individual needs and or requirements that when are met ensure true health and well-being. And that's a fact. Through this course, you're going to learn how to achieve true health and well-being. It'll be very clearly explained so that it becomes a goal that is extremely possible for you to manifest. I and my colleagues, Drs. George Asao, Joe McGillicuddy, Aratilla Fulham, and Ray Jimenez, along with Father Justin Bielitz and my sister Isabel Silva Chateau, will be providing you with information that will give you every reason to believe that true health is within your reach. And by satisfying the needs of each of your bodies or each of your parts, every area of your life will improve and become healthier through time. In this course, you're also going to learn that the one single factor that strengthens the connection between the body, mind, spirit, and emotions is that of meditating. And there's no escape from that. Meditating is the one thing that is going to strengthen your relationship with yourself, with your body, and especially with those parts of you that are invisible, intangible, with the physical senses, which is that spiritual part of you. The only true way to relate to that part of you that is spiritual and invisible is through meditation. And that practice or that exercise of meditation is the one thing that does strengthen the connection of spirit, mind, body, and emotions. It's going to be factored in everything we do throughout this program or throughout this course. The Civil Mind Body Healing Course is loaded with valuable information, tools, and exercises, all designed in order for you to turn your dreams of health into For the mere reason that you purchased this CD set, you may be in real need of health and healing. And I'm aware of that. I'm aware that you may have a condition that you really have to put a lot of thought and energy into the healing process. And when you heard of the Civil Mind Body Healing Course, you thought, gee, maybe this can help me to start getting healthy again. And I want this course to be that for you. I want this course to contain the kind of information that you need to make healing happen in your life and living experience. And because of that, I'm going to offer you a technique that I know can start the healing process. We're going to skip a lot of steps by me giving you this technique at this point in time early on in the CD set. And not all of your questions are going to be answered at this point in time, obviously. But as you apply the technique, apply it with all of your heart and soul, with a real desire to want to get healthy again, with the intention of getting healthy, with a lot of emotion of wanting to experience real health, true health and healing. I'll guide you along the way. And there may be things that you don't quite understand yet, how or why the technique works towards improving your health. But do it anyway. Do it anyway, because as you go through every CD, 
as we move forward in healing our belief structures and managing our stress effectively and healing our emotions and our spirit and our mind and then more tools to be applied to healing the body, you will see and you will discover how everything that you're going to hear from here on forward fits in to this one technique. But I really want you to start now and you can. So I'll share with you the Hall of Viewing technique with elements in there that you need to have for greater success in achieving your outcome of health. Greg Braden in the book, The Isaiah Effect, writes that the fundamental belief in many of the ancient philosophies is that we are already healed, that within each moment of our time in this world, we make choices, either affirming or denying the life that already exists in our bodies. So I really want you to come into this program understanding that you as a being are healthy and whole and complete, that there are things that happen to us in our living experience that chip away from that health in our emotions, in our spirit, in our mind, and in our body. But in essence, we are already whole and complete. Some of the masters of old viewed the expressions of illness as powerful illusions stemming from choices and actions made by the individual rather than looking to external causes. We cannot be pointing the finger at everything and everyone around us saying, it's because of that that I'm sick. It's because of. We can't do that because every time you point that finger, you have three fingers pointing right back at you. It's our choices, our actions that finally build up to what is the expression of our physical reality, the expression of our physical health. And it's not always a conscious choice or action. Often it's an unconscious choice and action. And that's something else that we want to add into our living experience is consciousness. I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you starting from the very beginning, but I just want this information to start aligning itself deep within you because it will all fall into place as you listen to the next CD and the one following and the one following that. Our souls are already healed and seek to express that state through our bodies, accepting our healing through our own beliefs and forgiveness. Our healing is mirrored through expression in this world through our bodies. Our bodies are truly the indicators of the quality of our choices. And often, if you think about it, many times the choices that we make and the actions that we take, we sometimes look back and say, why did I do that? Why did I make that choice? And we suffer sometimes either guilt and or the pain of making wrong choices and decisions, of having hurt ourselves or others. And all these things, all these emotional factors begin to chip away from our health because it affects our immune system. It affects the way we feel about ourselves inside. It affects the way our spirit is connected to God. It affects the way we think about ourselves and our thoughts have power over our bodies. It affects everything we do. And it's a really great time to start thinking of the connection that we have between spirit, mind, body, emotions, and intuition, because intuition helps guide us in making wise choices and decisions. Every single part of us is interrelated. And what we are aspiring to is a harmony of health. And you will see in the Hall of Viewing Technique how everything plays a role in the outcome that we desire to manifest. That's what it takes. It takes a lot of desire. It takes a lot of belief in yourself, in your ability that you can make it happen, in your belief that others have healed from the very condition that you may be experiencing right now. Millions have survived. Millions have healed. Millions are experiencing their bodies as whole and complete, as healthy in every way. And you need to remember that. You need to expect these outcomes to manifest. And not only do you need to desire, believe, and expect these things to happen, and we'll talk all about this later, I promise you that, but you also need to go at it with a deep-rooted intention of making it happen. And with the emotions that are going to move energy into manifestation as you desire to be. All I ask of you at this point in time is to keep an open mind because you have nothing to lose and everything to gain 
keep an open mind to the exercise that we're going to go through, and I'll explain it before we do it. Keep an open mind to the information that you're going to hear because it can truly make a difference in your life. This is what we're going to do in the Hall of Viewing technique. You're going to go into a meditative state, and we're going to use what is called the three-to-one method. This will allow you to slow down brain frequencies into the alpha frequency of brain function. Now, that's very easy to accomplish, sometimes by just simply closing your eyes and taking a deep breath and relaxing your body, you are already emitting alpha frequencies. And to function at alpha is something your body, brain, and mind does every day of your life, every night as you go to sleep. In fact, you go in and out of all the frequencies of brain from beta to alpha to theta to delta and back up again and back down again every night. So this is a normal function and a very easy frequency to achieve. So we're going to use a three to one method always from now on. When we say three, as you go into a meditation, you're going to relax your body. I'm going to ask you to take a deep breath and as you exhale to mentally repeat and visualize the number three, three times. And I will briefly guide you into a state of physical relaxation by saying to you, concentrate your sense of awareness on your scalp, the skin that covers your head. You will feel a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by circulation. Now release and relax all ligament pressures and tensions from this part of your body and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper and deeper as we continue. As I say that statement, you are then to focus your attention on your scalp and then later the forehead and the eyes, face, and all the way down your body, down to your toes. And as you focus your awareness on the different parts of your body, you are to release and let go of stress and tension. You are to experience a tingling sensation, a vibration, not only caused by circulation, but by being alive itself, just the whole fact, the mere fact that you have the energy of life within you. You're to concentrate and experience that and then relax that part of the body and all the way down to your toes. And Along the way, I'm going to ask you to concentrate within the body. And should there be any area of your body that needs to heal, maybe it's a particular gland like the pancreas or the gallbladder. Maybe it's an organ, your heart, your lungs, or something along those lines. Maybe it's an entire system, your respiratory system, your reproductive system, your excretory system whatever it may be, then you focus your attention on either that gland, that organ, or that system, and imagine it returning to perfect health. Number three, sometimes referred to as levels, will always be a trigger mechanism for you to relax physically. Then I'll ask you to take another deep breath, and as you exhale, you will mentally repeat and visualize the number two three times. From now on, number two will always be for mental relaxation. All you need to do to relax mentally is to think of tranquil and passive scenes. You're going to experience this scene. It could be imaginary. It could be real. In a very real way, as if you are in the experience, incorporating all of your mental senses, your ability to see, hear, taste, touch, and smell with your mind. And you're going to experience it in a very holographic manner. The more real you make the mental experience, the better it is for you, especially as we move forward in our mental exercises and begin to incorporate elements of psychoneuroimmunology, which is how we use our minds in a special way to influence the nervous system and the immune system towards health and healing. And we do that mostly through the images that we create. So when you create an image or a scene or an experience, a mental experience, you want to put yourself into the experience as if you are really there experiencing it in a very real manner, in a holographic manner. Then I'm going to ask you to take another deep breath, and as you exhale, you will mentally repeat and visualize the number one three times. Number one is your starting point. At that moment, you are now at a place, an internal space, where you can get started, where you can now deepen more into the experience, 
and then begin to incorporate imagery that's going to help attract what you want as far as health and healing is concerned. And I will guide you every step of the way. During the meditation, I will guide you to deepen further by counting from 10 to 1 or relaxing your eyelids and allowing that state of relaxation to flow slowly downward throughout your body. Or I may even ask you to project yourself to a real existing place that you go to to relax physically and allow you to remain there for a few moments, enjoying it in a holographic manner with all of your sensing mechanisms as if you are already there. Now, this is important because this is what it takes for you to begin to experience yourself in a situation as whole and complete, as fully present, and this is going to play a vital role in your health and healing. Once we have deepened, then I'm going to ask you to visualize your health condition. You're going to visualize it in an area of your mind that is past your eyelids, out and away from you. Now, a lot of these instructions, I will be repeating them throughout the course because I want them to be very clear to you as we move forward, but it's important that you start the healing now. So when I ask you to picture something, remember to do it past your eyelids in an area that is out and away from you. And that area is what we call your mental screen area. That's where you're going to project all of your scenes, all of your images. It's going to be past your eyelids and slightly above the horizontal level of sight in a very comfortable position of your eyes, tilted slightly upwards. Now, you're going to first picture a gray tone or black and white image that's kind of small, almost like a Polaroid snapshot of you and your health condition, your health problem, your health challenge, however you want to view it. It's preferable if you just view it in either gray tones or black and white and kind of small away from you like a picture, like a still picture. And now study it. Why do you have this health challenge to the best of your ability? Why do you have this problem? And notice how it's affecting everything about your life, your relationships, maybe your working ability, your way to enjoy your living experience everything, and study it for just a few moments, and I'll guide you along the way. Once you do that, you're going to imagine that scene getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it poofs away, and you might even want to hear in the background, poof. And at that very moment when it poofs away, imagine another scene, colorful, coming towards you. Stop it from approaching or getting too close. And that way, you can view this very colorful scene of you in perfect health and make it dynamic, lively, make it very, very appealing to your senses. Study that image of you already healthy, of you whole and complete, of you without this health problem. And imagine what you look like, totally healthy, perfectly healthy, whole, complete, You look wonderful. You look fabulous. And it's so appealing. Make the image larger still. Make it dynamic and colorful. And make it even more appealing to your senses. And as you bring it closer, does it still feel good? Does it feel even better? Do you want it even more to see yourself healthy and strong, walking and talking and moving in a very healthy manner? Your body looks good. Your muscle tone is healthy. The color in your skin is good. Your hair is healthy and robust. There's a sparkle in your eye. There's a smile to your face. There's an energy radiating out from within you that expresses true health in every way, in your body, in your mind, in your spirit, in your emotions, and you're living with belief structures that support health and well-being of you being whole and complete. Get it just right, and then make it larger still, large enough to come wrapping around you, and you find yourself in the experience. And now you are that person who is whole and complete and perfectly healthy, because you really are. 
experience how it feels to have that inner strength and vitality, to have that energy radiating out from within you, to be able to have strong muscles, to stand tall, to have this great healthy glow about you and color in your skin and healthy hair and nails. How does that feel? Experience it with all of your sensing mechanisms. Experience yourself whole and complete. Experience yourself perfectly healthy. And allow your body, brain, and mind to memorize that feeling. And now carry yourself with your imagination into the future and notice how this makes a difference in your life for the better. Notice how it makes a difference in your relationships with your family members or coworkers, in the way you go about your life. Imagine yourself in every aspect of your life. And answer these questions. What is it I actually want to achieve for the rest of my life in this area of health? Who's going to be giving me feedback along the way that I am perfectly healthy besides myself? Are there loved ones, a spouse or significant other, children, coworkers and friends and family members? When is this going to happen? When can I expect the first signs or indicators that I am moving in the direction of health and healing? How is it going to make my life different and better? And why? Why is this important to me? At this point in time and from the area of your heart, project outward an explosion of emotion of why this is so important. Is it because you want to live? Is it because this is important to you? You have family that you want to raise. You have people that you want to keep loving. You have an important mission and purpose in life, and you're not done with your mission. You haven't yet fulfilled your purpose in life. Whatever the reasons are, express it passionately and with a lot of emotion. And when you experience yourself whole and complete and perfectly healthy, express the explosion of emotion of gratitude, appreciation, and deep love for yourself to universal source energy, to God, however you want to experience it. But emotion moves energy into manifesting the way that you are picturing it and experiencing it. Feelings must be present. The emotion that represents those feelings must be present in everything you do. And you must always incorporate all of your sensory modalities. Now, again, I know I'm giving you way too much information, perhaps, at this point in time. But if nothing else, just listen to the exercise before you actually do it and become familiar with it. And then just enjoy what it feels like to be deeply relaxed physically and mentally and truly enjoy what it is like to feel healthy. Let's get ready for the exercise. And again, a lot of the gaps and the missing information will come. But I do think it's really important for you to start the healing process now. And this is the technique that you're going to hear again at the very end of this course. With this exercise, you will create what is called a strong attractor, which is an image of you, healthy, whole, and complete, that will guide you in the healing process. During this exercise, you're going to be hearing the relaxation sound in the background. It's a sound that's going to allow you to relax both physically and mentally and also deepen during your meditative experience. Just listen to it in the background. Don't pay too much attention to it. It will do what it's supposed to do and help you along the way. Before you actually do the exercise, get yourself into a comfortable position. Now that could be sitting in a chair with your palms on your lap and your feet flat on the floor, your spine somewhat erect, but not too rigid and not too, too relaxed. In other words, a comfortable sitting position that you can endure for about maybe 30 minutes. Or you may even get yourself into your bed or a prone position, but do note that when you get too, too comfortable, you might have a tendency to go into sleep, and we don't want you to go to sleep. We want you to be very conscious during the exercise. You'll also take occasional deep breaths, and throughout the exercise, together with those occasional deep breaths, maintain your breathing paced and rhythmic, slow, conscious, deep 
rhythmic breathing, allowing your belly to rise and to fall, and continue this slow, conscious, rhythmic, paced breathing throughout the entire exercise. Do listen to this exercise with your eyes open in a safe environment first before you actually do it. This way you'll know exactly what you're going to experience and there won't be any surprises built in there. Now, some of the things that you may not quite understand yet will become very clear to you as you listen to the coming CDs. But I'm happy that you're getting started with the healing process now by doing this exercise. This exercise is to be done as with all exercises in a very safe environment and never, never while driving or operating any kind of heavy machinery. You must be in a safe environment where you can really focus all of your attention to what you're doing and the healing process. That's when you're going to get the greatest benefits. At the end of the exercise, you'll notice that we'll be creating that image of you of whole and complete, of being in perfect health. That strong attractor image will be incorporated in some of the exercises we'll be doing. So it's going to be part of how you're going to evolve your imagery as you go through the program and heal every single part of your being. Anytime from now on that you think of your health problem, only and always imagine the strong attractor that you will create in this exercise. And from now on, focus all of your energy on you being in perfect health, whole and complete. Let's begin. We will begin this exercise with the three to one method. Find a comfortable position, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number three, three times. Level three is for physical relaxation, to learn to relax from head to toes in a matter of seconds, to help you learn to relax physically at level three. I'm going to direct your attention to different parts of your body. Concentrate your sense of awareness on your scalp, the skin that covers your head. You will detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by circulation. Now release all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper and deeper as we continue. Concentrate your sense of awareness on your forehead, the skin that covers your forehead. You will detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by circulation. Now release and relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper and deeper as we continue. Concentrate your sense of awareness on your eyelids and the tissue surrounding your eyes. You will detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by circulation. Now release and relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper and deeper as we continue. 
concentrate your sense of awareness on your face. The skin covering your cheeks. You will detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by circulation. Now release and relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper and deeper as we continue. Concentrate on the outer portion of your throat. The skin covering your throat area. You will detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by circulation. Now release and relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your body and place this area in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper and deeper as we continue. Concentrate within the throat area. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your body and place it in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate your sense of awareness within your entire head and throat area. Imagine every cell tissue and organ in this part of your body functioning in a healthy rhythmic manner. If there is anything that concerns you in this part of your body, imagine it functioning in perfect health. Concentrate on your shoulders, arms, and hands. Feel your clothing in contact with your body. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering your shoulders, arms, and hands. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your and place your shoulders, arms and hands in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate on your back. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and produce a state of relaxation in this part of your body from your neck to the end of your spine. Imagine every cell, tissue in this part of your body, every muscle, every bone, to be functioning in a normal, healthy, and rhythmic manner. If this is a concern for you, spend some time imagining your spine in perfect health.
concentrate on your chest. Feel your clothing in contact with this part of your body. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering your chest. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your chest in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate within the chest area. Relax all organs. Relax all glands. Relax all tissues, including the cells themselves, and cause them to function in a rhythmic, healthy manner. If you have any concerns within the chest area, imagine them returning to fine and perfect health. Concentrate on your abdomen. Feel the clothing in contact with this part of your body. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering your abdomen. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your abdomen in a deep state of relaxation going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate within the abdominal area. Relax all organs. Relax all glands. Relax all tissues, including the cells themselves, and cause them to function in a rhythmic, healthy manner. If there's any concern within your abdomen, imagine it returning to perfect health and functioning in a healthy, rhythmic manner. Concentrate on your thighs. Feel your clothing in contact with this part of your body. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering your thighs. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your thighs in a deep state of relaxation going deeper and deeper every time. Sense the vibration of life at the bones within your thighs. By now these vibrations are easily detectable. Imagine the bones within your thighs to be functioning in a healthy rhythmic manner. Imagine every single bone in your body, every single joint to be functioning in a healthy rhythmic manner. Concentrate on your knees. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering your knees.
Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your knees in a deep state of relaxation going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate on your calves. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering your calves. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place these parts of your body in a deep state of relaxation going deeper and deeper every time. To enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, concentrate on your toes. Enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. To enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, concentrate on the heels of your feet. Enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. Now imagine every cell, tissue, gland, organ, and system of your body to be functioning in a normal, healthy, rhythmic manner, as whole and complete. Take another deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize number two three times. Level two is for mental relaxation, where noises will not distract you. Instead, noises will help you to relax mentally more and more. To help you learn to relax mentally at level two, I'm going to call your attention to different relaxing scenes. Experiencing any scene that makes you feel tranquil and passive helps you to relax mentally. Experience this tranquil and passive scene with all of your sensing mechanisms from a holographic perspective as if you are actually there. Being near water on a nice summer day, feeling the warm sun, a gentle breeze, the sound of waves, may be a tranquil and passive scene for you, a very relaxing scene for you. Swinging on a hammock may be a tranquil and relaxing scene for you. A tranquil and relaxing scene for you may be a walk on a beautiful day when the breeze is just right, where there are tall shade trees beautiful flowers, a very blue sky, an occasional white cloud, and the birds singing in the distance. Hear birds singing in the distance.
This is mental relaxation level two, where noises will not distract you. To enhance mental relaxation at level two, practice visualizing tranquil and passive scenes. Take another deep breath, and as you exhale, mentally repeat and visualize the number one several times. You are now at your alpha level, a deeper, healthier level of mind where you can function from your center. To help you enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, I'm going to count from 10 to 1. On each descending number, you will feel yourself going deeper, and you will enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. As I count from 10 to 1, you may imagine yourself as if in an elevator descending from the 10th floor to the 1st floor. 10. Nine, feel going deeper. Eight, seven, six, deeper and deeper. Five, four, three, deeper and deeper. Two, one. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. You may enter a deeper, healthier level of mind by simply relaxing your eyelids. Relax your eyelids. A smile always helps to relax the muscles of the eyelids and face. Feel how relaxed they are. Allow this feeling of relaxation to flow slowly downward throughout your body, all the way down to your toes. It's a wonderful feeling to be deeply relaxed, a very healthy state of being. To help you enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, I'm going to count from one to three and cause a sound with my fingers. At that moment, you will project yourself mentally to your ideal place of relaxation. I will then stop talking to you and when you next hear my voice, you will take a deep breath, relax, and go deeper. One, two, three. Project yourself mentally to your ideal place of relaxation until you hear my voice again. Experience this relaxation as if you are actually there. Relax. Relax, take a deep breath, and as you exhale, relax and go deeper. The following beneficial statements you may repeat occasionally while at these levels of the mind. Repeat mentally after me. Every day, 
In every way, I am getting better, better and better. Positive thoughts, suggestions and images bring me benefits and advantages I desire. I will always maintain a perfectly healthy body, mind, and immune system. At this time, bring to mind your health condition and imagine it on your mental viewing area that is past your eyelids, out and away from your body slightly above the horizontal plane of sight, project it onto the mental screen area. Project an image in gray tones or black and white, not too big, like a Polaroid picture perhaps, a still picture, and study your problem. To the best of your ability, analyze why you have come to this point. emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and physically. Behaviors, attitudes, belief structures, whatever it is that has now ended up in this expression of health. Take a few moments just to study it, to become aware of it, to let it go, because never again will you come back to this image. Once it is gone, it is gone forever. Now imagine the image getting smaller and smaller, going farther and farther away until it poofs out of sight. And at the same time, imagine an image colorful and dynamic of you with perfect health appearing. Not too big and not too close. Keep it somewhat at a distance so that you can study it. And you can imagine yourself so strong and healthy, vibrant, energetic, happy, whole, and complete. You look wonderful. Bring the image closer to you. Make it bigger, colorful, and dynamic. And observe yourself in perfect health. Look how wonderful you look. The smile on your face, the color of your skin, the sparkle in your eye. Look at your posture. Your strength. The energy that radiates from deep within you of health. Health in every respect. In your emotions. In your spirit. In your mind. Holding healthy beliefs that attract what you desire into your living experience and it shows in your body. Perfect image of health. Make the image bigger still. Take a deep breath and as you exhale, allow it to come wrapping around you and find yourself in the image itself as whole and complete. How does it feel? How does it feel to be so strong and healthy, so energetic? What are people telling you? What do you hear them say about your health and how great you look?
imagine looking at yourself in a mirror, how healthy your skin and your hair look. And you can't help but smile because you feel so whole and complete, so healthy, so vibrant. What is letting you know that you've already started to achieve health and well-being, whole and complete? What indicators are there in your environment? Is it a health caretaker telling you something? Your family members? A report you got back? Experience it and allow your body, brain and mind to experience this feeling of health of being whole, of being complete, because you are. And memorize this feeling. From now on, every time you think of your health situation, you will only think of this feeling of this image of you as being whole and complete and experience it once again every time it comes to mind and only this in following exercises we will reinforce this experience of health and well-being And you will always experience it as already done, as already accomplished. It is already happening. Take a deep breath. Relax and go deeper and remember this feeling. Every time you function at these levels of the mind, you will receive benefits physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. You may use these levels of the mind to help yourself, to help your loved ones, and to help any human being who needs help physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. You will always use these levels of the mind in a constructive, creative manner for all that is good, honest, pure, clean, and positive. And this is so. In a moment, I'm going to count from one to five and cause a sound with my fingers. At that moment, you will open your eyes. You will be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health feeling better than before. One, two, coming out slowly now. Three, at the count of five, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before, feeling the way you feel when you have slept the right amount of revitalizing, refreshing, relaxing, healthy sleep. Four, five, Eyes open, wide awake, feeling fine, and in perfect health. The best place to start the healing process is in understanding the role stress plays in the area of health. Because science claims that stress is responsible for about 90% of all health problems, then it's important to discover what triggers your stress and how to manage it effectively. The destructive effects of stress on one's health have been well documented for many years. Many of the health-threatening conditions can be fatal. We all experience stress to some degree or another. It's unavoidable. To make matters worse, stress is often accompanied by intense emotions, hostility, anxiety, and depression. There are life events that seem to cause stress to all people across the board, things like illness, Death, divorce, a big move, 
loss of a job, or some kind of profound life change rate really high on the list of stressful events. How we react to stress is often more damaging than the stress itself. Although we may not be able to control everything that happens around us, we certainly can control how we respond to it. Our willingness to change our response to stress is often our biggest challenge in managing stress effectively. We unconsciously react to stress in such a manner that resembles a habit, and habits, as many of us know, are often really difficult to break. But keep in mind that your reaction to stress is not a fingerprint that you're stuck with for the rest of your life. It is a learned response that you can modify or eliminate. For you to get back to true health and experience coming from whole and complete and maintain it, you must understand what stress is and then learn to manage it effectively. Stress is a physical, chemical, or emotional factor that causes wear and tear on the body as a whole. It creates imbalance in every bodily system. There are several ways of viewing stress. Short-term stress is referred to as acute. Acute stress occurs when our lives are being threatened or we perceive danger. It is a kind of stress we experience when we're being chased by a dog while jogging. It immediately triggers a fight-or-flight response and it's not likely to be life-threatening. Long-term stress is referred to as chronic, and often that leads to serious health challenges. Some of the first symptoms of chronic stress are headaches, insomnia, and digestive problems. If you're suffering from any of these problems, you're lucky, because that's just your body telling you that you are under too much stress and the conditions have not gotten that serious yet. These conditions are your body's way of telling you that you need to slow down and make some changes. If constant stress continues or gets worse, the symptoms also get worse. Conditions like high blood pressure, arthritis, glaucoma, and hypoglycemia may result. Persistent stress can potentially lead to a breakdown in the immune system and diseases like leukemia, cancer, and multiple sclerosis have the right conditions to develop. If you're suffering from the more simple type of conditions like headaches, insomnias, and digestive problems, then you need to take some time off and just meditate at least 15 minutes a day. If you have more serious conditions like high blood pressure, arthritis, glaucoma, and hypoglycemia, then I recommend that you meditate twice a day for at least 15 minutes every time. And if you have really serious conditions like immune problems or leukemia, cancer, illnesses of those types, then I recommend that you meditate three times a day for 15 minutes every time. Dr. Hans Selye researched stress back in the 30s and separated stress into two categories, distress and eustress. The bad kind of stress is called distress, and the good kind of stress is called eustress. Distress is probably the more detrimental of the two types of stress. It can paralyze us from taking action. It keeps us from enjoying life fully and completely. It can even kill us. Distress usually occurs when you or someone close to you is ill, has lost their job, has lost a loved one, or can't pay the bills. When the mental or physiological response to chronic stress is less than resourceful, the outcome is damaging to overall well-being. On the other hand, eustress is perceived as good stress that helps us to perform And the kind of stress we experience when we're going through happy events like a graduation, a wedding, a birth of a child, a competitive event, or a vacation. When stress is managed effectively, you can experience many positive effects. There are many reasons why people experience stress. Stress results from a physical or mental stimulus that is perceived as a disruptive change. Any sudden change in a typical day schedule might be perceived as creating disorder, and that has a potential of generating stress. It could be something as simple as not being able to find your car keys or leaving home two minutes late. Every time we experience stress, we have some kind of reaction. 
our reaction to stress largely depends on how we think, believe, and or behave. The reaction is fully under our control. Whereas we tend to react with excitement and joy to use stress, the opposite is true when it comes to distress. How we react to stress must be the focus of our attention because it is the one most revealing element that will make conscious the very factors that are at the core of your health problems. If we do not discover how we react under stress, then we continue to react that way unconsciously through time, making it difficult to control or manage the stress and improve the quality of our health. The following simple exercises will help you to explore and discover how you react to stress and why. Bring to mind the most recent memory where you experienced stress. It could be something that happened just this morning. As you bring to mind this stressful event, remember what you were thinking and picturing. Now answer the following questions. Upon noticing that you were feeling stressed, how did you react to the stressful event? How did your behavior change? How did the quality of your thoughts change? Was there an underlying belief? And if there was, can you identify it? What about the thought or expectation that motivated you or led you to react the way you did during that stressful event? What did you say or do that was different when you were experiencing the stressful event than when you were calm and in control? And what kind of physical changes did you notice in your body? This little exercise allows you to be more conscious of your internal experience and your external experience as well. And we need to add consciousness into our everyday living experience in order to be able to expose and break some of the deep patterns and make changes in our lifestyle, in our health. Now let's do another little exercise. This time, imagine that you're having the following experience. You're driving down the highway during the morning rush hour on your way to work. You notice someone behind you driving at a very high speed and getting closer and closer by the second. As the driver passes you up and cuts in front of you, you nearly swerve off the road. You get control of your car and luckily nobody gets hurt. Now, What are you thinking and picturing as the driver is getting closer and closer before passing you up? Were you picturing an accident in the making? Your car turned upside down or you hurt? What do you think or say as a driver passes you up? How do you react? What do you do? Do you scream out in anger and wave your fist in the air? What belief or thought is fueling your reaction? Is it a belief like, only careless people drive that way? Do you feel anger? Do you have a sense of the situation being out of your control? And what physical changes did you notice in your body? Did your heart start beating faster and harder? Breathing change? Did it go faster and become shallow? Did your muscles tense? Did your stomach feel upset? Did you get angry? Were you a little afraid? All these questions that you are answering bring to mind the experience in a way that you can evaluate it, study it, break it down, and break its structure. Because the more you break the structure of your reaction, the easier it is to be able to react more effectively and more resourcefully. 
Becoming aware of your reaction to stress is the most important step in managing it effectively and exposing those unconscious attachments that affect your everyday living experience. Attachments are like emotional addictions. They are the little things in life that we unconsciously succumb to, like, I have to be there on time, or I have to have my food prepared a certain way and only that way. And once you expose the attachments, you're able to take the power away from the very things that you're unconsciously addicted to. And the more you're able to expose them, the less power they have. And then we can suddenly find ourselves saying, well, you know what? I prefer to be there on time, but nothing's going to happen if I get there two or three minutes late. Or I prefer my food this way, but if it comes out a little bit different but still tastes good, that's okay. So we suddenly shift attachments that things that we have to have a certain way into things that we prefer. And we alleviate ourselves from that extreme pressure of the addictions that we live with every day in our lives. Your thoughts, beliefs, and behaviors have plenty to do with how you react. And your reaction causes your body to go through many changes. The changes your body goes through when experiencing stress is a sign that the stress response, also known as the fight or flight response, has been triggered. The fight or flight response is a built-in survival mechanism. It is a response to perceived danger. Anytime we sense our life is in danger, the fight or flight response is triggered so we can run away from the danger or fight it in order to survive. The body is designed to automatically undergo changes that will assist the actual fighting or fleeing. The only thing is that we no longer have to fight or flee. Instead, now, we get angry or become afraid. Instead of the fight part, we can get so angry that we feel like we want to punch somebody out, but we don't because we're civil. And the flee part has grown or evolved to being afraid of the situation. I'm so afraid, I think I'll just run away from this. Most of the changes the body goes through when the stress response has been triggered are very obvious. Yet there are a multitude of internal changes that occur as well, such as hormonal imbalances that can lead to high blood pressure and damage to the kidneys, hardening of the arteries, and in extreme cases, heart failure and a severely suppressed immune system. Blood flow can increase 3 to 400% in order to get the body, brain, and lungs ready for action. Functions that are not essential for immediate survival, like digestion, stop. And as this occurs repeatedly through time, day in and day out, this can be detrimental to the body. A large percentage of the population trigger the fight-or-flight response daily over and over and over for things that don't merit it. Accumulating stress that has little to do with physical survival and more to do with our emotional well-being. Through time, the buildup of stress is very real, but has no valid release. This buildup of stress becomes chronic and damage to the body is inevitable. We can easily see then how constant activation of the stress response due to anger and fear can result in the many chronic diseases I've touched upon earlier. The fight or flight response was beneficial, even vital for our ancestor survival. But this is not the case today. Look around you. We have survived as a race, as humanity. In these modern times, we rarely have a need to either fight or run away in order to survive. And so the response does not serve the same purpose today as it did in the long ago past. Even though the very response has evolved, the triggering of the fight or flight response through anger and or fear still creates the same symptoms in our body. You need to become aware of what makes you angry and or afraid in your everyday living experience 
And how many times are you going to cause your heart to beat faster, your breathing to change, your digestion to stop, your inner processes to be put on hold, your muscles to tense, and hormones to be released into your system? This ongoing triggering of the fight or flight response is what leads to chronic tension type problems like high blood pressure, insomnia, arthritis, headaches, migraines, and digestive problems. The good news is that if a disease results from the inability to manage anger and fear effectively, then what is necessary to help restore balance is to have a greater awareness of what causes anger and fear. Then you must be willing to take responsibility to make the necessary changes so as to respond more appropriately. Lifestyle changes that involve a holistic approach and include meditation and relaxation are changes that lead to health. It is clear that we can safely say that the human race as a whole has survived. The response has accomplished what it was meant to do. And through time, that response has undergone its own evolution. Based on our modern-day reactions to stress, the fight-or-flight response no longer exists in its original form. Instead of fighting, we now get angry. We end up mismanaging the stress, allowing it the time to build up the potential to hurt us sometime down the road. Instead of fleeing, we now become afraid. What's important to notice is that unlike fighting and fleeing, being angry and or afraid are not physical behaviors. They are emotions. At the very root of the fight or flight response is a need to protect the emotions. Stress triggers an emotional reaction and it is worsened by what automatically goes on in the body when the fight or flight response is triggered. When we feel stress, it is no longer so that we can survive physically. It is so that we may survive emotionally. And if we can't survive emotionally or cope with our life and living, we might get very ill and possibly die. What needs to be done the moment you begin to sense that you're shifting from comfort to stress is to interrupt the reaction and convert it into a response instead. It's far more valuable to respond with ability to any situation than to react without control. When you react to something that is causing stress, you need to ask yourself whether it's because of anger or fear. And what is the cause of the anger and or fear? Anger and fear will trigger some very deep core issues, issues that you may be unaware of and that are at the very root of your stress reaction and your health challenges. The most common of those core issues have to do with abandonment, rejection, hopelessness, helplessness, and the lack of control. When a core issue is being triggered, the mere fact that it is being triggered means that it's something that belongs to your past. For example, when was the first time you felt abandoned? The answer could be something as simple as your parents going out to dinner and leaving you behind, or as serious as being left in front of someone's doorstep as an infant. The reality is that you might not even remember the actual past event, and yet the experience of abandonment was so deeply impressed that it resulted in an issue that is still being triggered today. When was the first time you felt rejected? Someone could have praised your sibling and not you. Maybe you were passed up at school or not picked up to play in a sports team, or the only one in your class not to be invited to a party. When did you first experience the feeling of hopelessness? Something like wanting the latest bike for your birthday, but your family didn't have the money to buy it for you. That alone could have led to a feeling of hopelessness. Wanting to try out for a sport, but you have a physical handicap, can also lead to hopelessness. 
When did you first experience the feeling of helplessness? For some people, having been physically overpowered by someone much bigger than themselves could have led to a feeling of helplessness. Seeing someone you know suffer and not being able to help them can also lead to helplessness. When did you first experience a feeling of frustration for not getting your way or having full control over a situation? For example, being made to go to your room as a punishment from a parent makes a child feel that they have no control. Or being told how to think, speak, believe, and behave could lead to a feeling of not being in control. In time, this could also lead to a strong desire to want to control others and situations. It's no wonder so many of us are such control freaks. The point of the matter I'm making here is that these emotions have to do with your past and can cause plenty of stress. Most of the things that you experience stress over are things that really belong in the past, not so much in the present. They were experienced when you were very young, probably before the age of seven, when your brain was producing a predominance of theta frequencies and the mode of thinking was inductive. In other words, you were soaking everything in and you did not have the necessary resources or the language, skill level, or capabilities to handle or understand those experiences. Today, you may feel that you're all grown up physically, intellectually, spiritually, and emotionally, But the moment you're face-to-face with a trigger, the snowball effect begins. First, you experience a shift from comfort to stress, with a knotted feeling in the pit of your stomach. Then your mind begins to fill with sabotaging thoughts and negative feelings linked to issues of your past, followed by a cluster of physical changes due to the triggering of the fight-or-flight response, And then comes the expression of the stress itself in a form of a reaction that resembles a child or a past you lacking understanding in resources who's angry, afraid, or hurt. When past issues get triggered, it's as if the child you is forced to surface. In a flash, you are transported to become the child once again and as a child made to handle the adult situation. The adult you is nowhere to be found. Too often, serious situations are handled by the child you when they really need to be handled by the adult you. The adult you has many more resources than the child you and can handle situations much more effectively. Imagine being in the following example. You're at home having a wonderful afternoon and the phone rings. You pick up the phone and answer to find out that... The nurse at your doctor's office is on the other end of the line. And she says, hello, may I speak to Mrs. Smith? And you say, yes, this is Mrs. Smith. Oh, Mrs. Smith, I just want to tell you that your test results are in. And he goes, oh, well, great. Um, what, what were they? And the nurse says, well, you know what? I think you better come into the office. The doctor would rather tell you in person. So can you make it Tuesday at 9? And you say, yes, sure, I can make it Tuesday at 9. And at this point, you're already beginning to feel the stress. What are you thinking or picturing? Are you thinking, oh, no, I wonder if he's going to give me some bad news. Maybe the test results came out really badly. What's going to happen to me? It's going to be bad. I know it is. What belief was fueling the reaction? Was it something like, well, with my health challenges, what do I expect but the worst? Now, this is a belief charged with emotion and beliefs create your living experience. How did you react? What did you say or do? Did you feel sad? Worried? Afraid? Did you want to cry? And what physical changes did you notice in your body? Did your heart start to beat faster and harder? Did your breathing change? Did your muscles tense? Stomach get upset? What was triggered emotionally? Was it fear that you were going to hear the worst news, that you were going to lose your life, that it was over? Because if it was, 
Then helplessness and hopelessness was triggered, and that's something that belongs in your past. What needs to be done the moment you experience a shift towards stress is to immediately interrupt the pattern of reaction that automatically kicks in and allows the child you to surface. By interrupting the pattern of reaction with something as simple as taking a deep breath, you give yourself time to think resourcefully, and that will help allow the adult you to stay in control and respond appropriately. Something else that needs to be brought to awareness is the quality of the mental pictures that are generated by your thoughts when you are under stress and the emotions attached to that whole internal experience. Very key factors are your belief structures, your emotions that are attached to those beliefs, the thoughts or the quality of thoughts and images that you create. A person under stress has a tendency to generate negative thoughts, self-talk, mental pictures, and emotions. Remember that emotionally charged thoughts are energy in motion. They are the substance of your belief and precede physical manifestation. The emotionally charged thought must be present first for anything to happen. Negative thoughts and pictures create the ideal environment for negative outcomes, especially when they are emotionally charged. In the previous example, if bad news is not what you want as an end result, then don't think it or even picture it. You must always think of and picture only and always what you want instead. To put it all together, once you interrupt the pattern of reaction with a deep breath, Then you can identify whether it's caused by fear or anger and what core issue is being triggered. You then proceed by separating yourself, the adult you, from the past unresourceful you and allow the adult you to handle the situation by thinking of and picturing a positive outcome instead. An ideal picture is always one that demonstrates the greatest good and expresses that no matter what happens, you are going to be just fine. When applying this approach in any situation that causes stress, the final picture needs to be one that involves mostly you achieving your outcomes. Ideal outcomes involve some aspects of health, happiness, love, abundance, inner peace, and problem solving. And they have really positive emotions backing them up like appreciation, compassion, gratitude, just great feeling emotions. The greatest outcome that you're out to achieve is you being whole and complete. Although there may be others in the image, they're only there to enhance the image and make it more desirable. Never include anyone in the picture with a desire to control them or make them do or feel something that you want them to do or feel. See, that's a control issue all over again. Doing this would be self-defeating. You cannot control the thoughts, feelings, or behaviors of others, only your own. Once you get the image of what you desire just right, then I recommend you step into the image and use a trigger mechanism to lock in or anchor a certain feeling, disposition, emotion, behavior, thought, or level of sensitivity in order for them to be accessible at a later time. Anything can serve as a trigger mechanism. The most used trigger mechanisms are subtle, unnoticeable, and slightly different than normal, such as the fingers of the hand touching in a slightly unusual manner with the first two fingers touching your thumb and the ring finger and the small finger resting on your palm. Now, this is something that we teach in the Civil Life System Home Study course and the life presentations. We call it the three fingers technique. But by just following my instructions right now, you'll be able to use the three fingers technique, this trigger mechanism, in a very resourceful way. This trigger is especially useful in that it can be a reminder for you to engage your whole being in any situation of importance. 
You can designate a part of yourself to each of your fingers. Remember that we are multidimensional beings. We're not just the body, but we are the spirit, the mind, the emotions, and there's an intuitive part of us that can guide our decision-making abilities. Now, each one of your fingers can be assigned to one of your parts or one of your bodies, as we've talked about earlier. Your thumb can represent your physical part and manages your health and composure, relaxed breathing, healthy posture, and confident stance. Your first finger can represent your mental or intellectual part that manages clarity, alertness, wit, ideas, creativity, and problem-solving abilities. Your second finger, or the middle finger, can represent your emotional part that manages emotional balance, appropriate experience and expression of emotions, and personal control. Your ring finger that rests on the palm of your hand can represent your spiritual part. That has to do with your connection to source energy, universal energy, higher power with all, being compassionate, loving, having purpose, solving problems, and doing good deeds for others. Your small finger, also resting on the palm of your hand, can represent your intuitive part. This allows you to be guided by your inner voice, trusting that you will say the right thing at the right time and make right decisions and choices. Use this trigger mechanism once you have a clear picture of the outcome you desire for a particular situation. At that time, begin assigning the physical qualities you want to have available to you to your thumb. Then touch your thumb with the first finger and assign the mental qualities desired. Then touch your second finger with your thumb and assign to it the emotional qualities desired. Then touch your ring finger with your palm and assign to it the spiritual qualities desired. Finally, you touch your small finger to your palm and assign to it the intuitive qualities you desire to have during that specific situation. Once all the qualities are locked in with your trigger mechanism, then they are accessible to you by simply placing your hand in that same position during the time that you're going through that specific situation in your living experience. You will be able to access the very qualities you want to have present Here are some useful time. strategies to help manage stress effectively. Determine what causes you to feel angry and afraid. That's going to bring a lot of consciousness into your living experience. And for a while, you just might want to take the time observing. Don't do anything much unless you are you know, comfortable, confident to do so. But you might want to for a few days just simply observe your living experience from that perspective to determine what causes even the slightest anger and or fear, whatever causes you to feel uncomfortable inside. And make a list. Whereas fear can stand alone, anger usually is accompanied by fear. They both lead to stress anyway. We often pretend to seem unmoved by all the things that bother us. We are simply in denial. And we end up suppressing our anger out of the fear that something bad will happen to us or someone else. Now, we need to be really conscious of that whole experience day in and day out if we ever plan to manage it effectively. And by managing our stress effectively, we are able to manage our health condition effectively. We need to remember that 90% of all health challenges are stress-related, which means that 90% of all health challenges are emotionally rooted. Fear and anger are emotions. And once we are able to discover more about what causes fear and anger in our lives, or when those emotions are triggered, then we are well on our way to getting healthier and healthier every day in every way. You also need to learn more resourceful ways to deal with anger and fear. Anytime you feel angry and or afraid, it's not about the person or situation you believe is causing you to feel that way. It's all 
only about you. When you find yourself pointing the finger at someone or something, you have three fingers pointing right back at you. Stop playing the blame game. Manage your stress by learning to understand what's going on inside you. Make necessary changes in how you believe, behave, and think in relation to that person or that situation. And then allow the adult you to respond with ability instead of letting the little child you react without control. The adult you would say, I feel angry, and do something about it. The child you would say, you make me angry, and pout. So who's in charge here? Something else you may need to do is to set clear boundaries. Stop overstressing yourself needlessly. Learn when to say yes, when to say no, and when to say thank you. Learn where to draw the line. You may feel compelled to do things over and beyond the call of duty and without anyone asking you to do these things. The super mom, dad, employee, and friend syndrome can drain your emotional and physical reserves fast. No one can do everything for everyone all the time. Set your limits and honor them. If you feel guilty when you say no, then explore how guilt ties into your past. Guilt is one of the greatest stressors that people experience. There is the guilt factor. Another one is having lost something or someone of great value with no way or means to recuperate it. And the other one is when you have a lot of little stressors that come together at the same time. That can be the same as one big stressor. So those three different stressors are what cause the greatest harm to the immune system, to your body, to your mind, to your health. When you say no, you may also be triggering the core emotion of rejection. The child you may be thinking, they won't like me if I say no to them. If that is the case, then take care of the child you in a meditation. Recall yourself when you were a child and talk to that child you in your mind in a very holographic manner, as if you are there standing in front of you as a child, and give the child you the resources, the explanations, or the understanding that the child needs in order to make sense of what was going on in your life as a child. And by doing that, you will allow the adult you to take charge more and more through time. Another strategy is to allow yourself to accept help from others. Let the people who love and support you the most help you when you're stretched too thin and all stressed out. As you are there for them, they will be more than happy to be there for you. All you have to do is ask. Most people would be happy to do something helpful for someone else, even a stranger, but they're never asked. Share the good feelings you get out of helping others by letting them help you as well. It is healthier and less stressful to live interdependently instead of independently. Take care of your personal business as well. Make sure that you create a strategy that allows you to pay your bills on time, put food on the table, have positive relationships, prioritize, and meet your needs and responsibilities. By doing this, a large chunk of stress will be avoided or eliminated. Don't create stress over situations that you're in control of. There's enough to deal with already. Simplify your life by taking care of your own personal business, and being timely, improving those behaviors, it's a lot less stressful than the alternative. Yes, and that does mean you need to work on your behaviors, your habits, and lifestyles. Are your behaviors working for you, or are they working against you? There are positive and negative ways to deal with stress. If overindulging in alcohol is your way of dealing with stress, then you're looking at a big red flag. The same is true about other behaviors like drug use, staying out late, overeating, overexercising, etc. There will be less stress in your life if whatever behaviors you have are healthy and balanced. 
Too much of anything is not always a good thing. Another strategy to consider is to learn to accept. One of the best ways to reduce stress is to accept others for who they are, their worldviews, and what they stand for. This does not mean you agree with them all the time. It simply means that you understand that they're different than you. This is one of the hardest lessons to learn. This is especially true when characteristics in others are so different than your own. Everybody is different, and like you, everybody has a birthright to be who they are. You cannot control others, nor can you force changes on them. You can only do your best to understand them, accept them as they are, and look for the positive intentions behind their actions. If you can't do this, it may be better for you to simply stay away from them. In the same light, others may feel the same towards you as you do towards them. There would be a lot less tension and stress in the world if acceptance was factored into human interactions of all kinds. Even more importantly, is you learning to accept yourself for who and how you are. Although there are many things we can change and improve about ourselves, the fact remains that there are many things that cannot be changed. You simply need to find a way to come to terms with that. Find your talents, if you haven't already. Apply it towards helping others along the way and accept proudly who you are, your worth and purpose in life. Discover how truly special and unique you are. And treat yourself to some good old healthy fun. Have a good laugh with loved ones and friends. Go see a funny movie or go to a comedy club. Laughter helps release and reduce stress. There's something good to be learned in everything that happens, no matter how bad it may seem. So don't take things too seriously. Most of the things we fear never happen. Most of the things that we're afraid are going to happen don't. Learn how to find the good and positive sides of everything, especially if it wasn't what you were expecting or desiring. And laughter is known to promote health. And one other thing you must do, and we're going to talk about this a lot more as we move forward, is you must begin a practice of meditation. You cannot be stressed and relaxed at the same time. Practicing relaxation and meditation allows your body to take a break from stress and learn how to relax at will. Relaxation is a major ingredient needed for overall wellness to exist. The physical body needs rest and relaxation in order to restore energy and heal. The spiritual body relies on prayer in order to connect to source. The emotional body internalizes in order to connect with its feelings. The mental body depends on meditation in order to visualize, imagine, plan, set goals, heal, and solve problems. They all work best when you close your eyes, take a deep breath, release and relax muscle tensions, and deepen through rhythmic, deep breathing. Many people equate meditation and sleep and don't see any great value in meditating over sleeping. While sleep is necessary for health, meditation is different than sleep. Meditation seems to have similar benefits as sleep and many more benefits that sleep cannot provide. During meditation, as muscle tension decreases, the body exerts less energy, slows down its breathing, and stress-related hormones in the blood are lowered. Pain due to injury Headaches and muscle tension can also be alleviated by meditation. In addition, meditation seems to enhance right brain function. And right brain function is associated with creativity, imagination, and problem solving. I hope by now you have a better understanding of how stress affects the body and how your past and your emotions, and we'll be talking a lot about emotions and belief structures, influence your stress. You have also learned many strategies to reduce the amount of stress in your life. All of that will be much more effective with a daily dose of relaxation. Although many of the reasons we experience stress are rooted in our past, 
It is up to you to learn to use the past in a constructive and resourceful manner in order to take control of your life and live more consciously, have a better understanding of what causes stress, and diminish the negative effects of stress. Just by discovering what causes your stress and becoming conscious of how you react to it is a huge step in regaining health. You will hear a background sound that is used for deep relaxation. Allow the sound to simply deepen your inner state. Keep your inner state passive and quiet. Towards the end of the exercise, the background sound will shift its pace and go faster. Your brain frequency will match the sound and rise to a higher level of consciousness where you will be able to open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine, and in perfect health. It is recommended that you listen to the meditation at least once before doing it. This will help you become familiar with the exercise and receive even greater we benefits. We will begin this exercise with a 3 to 1 method. Find a comfortable position. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. And while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number three, three times. Level three is for physical relaxation where you can learn to relax physically from head to toes in a matter of seconds. To help you learn to relax physically at level three, I'm going to direct your attention to different parts of your body. Relax your scalp. Relax your forehead. Relax your face. Relax your throat internally and externally. Relax your neck and spine. Relax your shoulders, arms, and hands. Take a deep breath, and as you exhale, relax your chest externally and internally. Imagine every cell, tissue, gland, and organ functioning in a healthy, rhythmic manner. Take another deep breath, and as you exhale, relax your abdominal area externally and internally. Imagine every cell, tissue, gland, and organ to be functioning in a healthy, rhythmic manner.
Relax your thighs. Relax your knees. Relax your calves. Relax your feet. Take a few moments to release and relax any lingering tension or ligament pressure. Remember to continue to breathe slowly, deeply, and rhythmically. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. This is your physical relaxation level three. Whenever you mentally repeat and visualize the number three, your body will relax as completely as you are now and more so every time you practice. Take another deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number two three times. Level two is for mental relaxation. To relax mentally, picture tranquil and passive scenes. Take another deep breath and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number one three times. You are now at level one, the basic plane level that you are able to use for a purpose, any purpose you desire. To help you enter a deeper and healthier inner state, I'm going to count from 10 to one. With each number, you will feel yourself relaxing more and more, entering a deeper, healthier state of being. 10, 9, going deeper and deeper within. 8, 7, 6, deeper and deeper. 5, 4, Three, deeper and deeper. Two, one. Take a slow, healthy, deep breath, and as you exhale, feel how you are now in a deeper, healthier inner state. We are now going to impress the stress management strategy. At this time, think of a situation 
or an individual that causes you stress or you have had trouble dealing with. Be conscious of when your body first begins to shift towards stress and where in your body you experience it. Your body will let you know when you begin to shift from being relaxed to becoming stressed. It could be a tension in your muscles or any part of your body. It could be a sensation in the pit of your stomach. You may notice that your stomach feels nervous-like. Become very sensitive to how your body reacts to stress. Imagine closing your eyes the moment you feel your body shifting from comfort towards stress. This helps shut out the external stimulus so that you can begin to listen to what is going on inside. Take a deep breath and pace your breathing, exhaling slowly and gently, saying to yourself mentally, relax and get in control. Do this with a second and a third deep breath. This helps to calm and pace you. Now identify what is being triggered. Is it anger, fear, or both? Then identify what past issue is being triggered. Is it abandonment? rejection, hopelessness, helplessness, or lack of control. Separate yourself from the past or child you that does not have the needed resources to best handle the situation and allow the adult you to take over. You can always go back in time mentally and take care of the needs of that child you during another meditation. Create an ideal mental picture of what you desire as an outcome. Make sure the main focus is on you and picture an outcome that represents you at your best. Do not limit the direction from where you will get this outcome. Imagine yourself handling the situation more resourcefully. Step into that resourceful adult you, engaging yourself fully and completely. Be one with the image and fully experience the outcome you desire. Lock it in with your trigger mechanism and say to yourself mentally, whenever I have a need or desire to feel this way, think this way, believe this way, or behave this way. All I need to do is use my trigger mechanism and it will be so. Now imagine opening your eyes and handling the situation resourcefully.
relax, feeling well, listening to my voice, return to this place and this time, eyelids remain closed. Now bring to mind the image that you have created of yourself, healthy, whole and complete. Project it onto your mental screen area. Bring it closer and closer to you. And now step into the image and experience it fully and completely with all of your sensing mechanisms. Experience health. Experience energy flowing through you. Strength and vitality. How wonderful it is to be healthy, whole, and complete. Project an explosion of emotion from the area of your heart, appreciation, and love. And experience it in a past tense sense. It has already happened. You are healthy, whole, and complete. Remember this feeling. Enjoy it. You are now experiencing a deep sense of relaxation. As you come out of this wonderful state of peacefulness, you will feel fully rested, alert, energetic, and healthy. I will now count from one to three. At the count of three, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health. One, slowly and gently, Begin to bring your awareness back to this time and this place, bringing with you all the benefits of deep relaxation. 2. Notice your breathing. Feel your clothing in contact with your body. 3. Open your eyes feeling refreshed and perfectly healthy and with an increased sense of peacefulness, feeling as if you have had the right amount of refreshing, relaxing, healthy sleep. This strategy will become so automatic that you will be able to do it in a matter of seconds. At first, using the strategy may require for you to review the steps Soon, the pattern will be so impressed on your brain and mind that you will kick it in automatically, purposefully, and consciously. Once your brain learns a new pattern that makes you feel better, it will choose to use it. This new pattern will become a good habit that will allow you to manage stress effectively. In addition to using this strategy, practice a long relaxed exercise found in this CD set at least once a week. This will help you learn to relax deeply and manage stress even more effectively. To guarantee success with your Silva techniques, we recommend that you take the Silva Life System training. 